everyone. Um, it's Kelly and I wanted to let you all know that we are going to do some uh, combing work. Um, for those of you who are beginners, um, this is one of those uh, sort of staples of the art form and I'm just going to go through a few very simple little patterns and show you different ways in which you can use them. Um, and then we'll I'll go through each style and show you exactly how to make each one. This uh, pattern I have made before on my video about the ombre flowers, and I am making a new one for a friend of mine. She wants a uh, duplicate of something else that I've made, and I'm going to add this flower to it. So um, it starts with these small pieces, and what this is is it's three different colors so that when it comes together the it gives the flower the illusion of being uh, 3d so i i've picked three different colors of blue and um, each one has four of these comb pieces together so we'll go through those in a minute and I, on the slow-mo version i will go through each one of these and show you how to produce them this is also comb work. These are um, just a teardrop shape, but done on a comb. The great thing about working on a comb and that I love working on a comb is that it keeps your um, swirls <laughs> uh, evenly spaced and uniform looking so that if you have, you know, a lot of these, the piece will have a uh, continuity to it. So that's just a teardrop. This. I don't know what you would call this particular type, but this is an underside loop, which again, I'll show you, but there's a lot of things that you can do with this particular type of pattern. So um, I've got a couple of examples here. This is one that I've bent with the curls on the outside, and this is one that I've done with the curls on the inside. I've used these on um, snowflakes that I've made and these, I've done lots of different things with these. I've even done like a border around one of my pieces so that it looked like it was sort of um, edged in a lace. And it's just so beautiful. So that's also a very simple little comb work, but I'll show you how to do those in a moment. And then this is an example of them turned um, together. So I started with this shape and then I just produced one, two, three, four more, and glued those ends together to give it that look. So what I had done is fold this direction and then glue them this way. And so what it does is it produces a look that they're double-sided. So I'll show you that as well. These are, um, just individual teardrop shapes, but that I have shaped them so that they will come out looking sort of like a brocade or a filigree type pattern. And um, I'll show you some pictures of those and, and we'll produce some more of those. The piece that I'm doing for my friend where this will be in the middle is going to be surrounded by this type of filigree. So that's what all of these are. I make these, um, I end up making about 200 of these for a five by seven piece. And I'm gonna do a quill along um, on my next video that's going to show how all of these elements will come together. I thought it was a great opportunity. A lot of people have asked me about uh, the filigree brocade type look. And um, it's close to Christmas time right now and she wants that for Christmas, so we're gonna do that. And I thought it was a really good opportunity to show you all how I do that. Um, this one is also some comb work. It's again, this very simple little design. And then I put in the center when I had it turned this direction, I did a little teardrop shape just from a coil and then I put it on the outside and then I also wrapped it in two different colors of green. These make beautiful little leaves. And again, there's some pictures that I'm showing in the video that shows you different ways to use these designs as well. And then the very last one that I'm going to produce, there are some other simple ones out there. Uh, like when you first buy a comb, you'll see some of these really simple little patterns and I'm not gonna go through those, 
because those are pretty self-explanatory. But this is um, an element that I've used a few times in some of my work and I can make about 10 to 11 of these if you want an odd number and you can make them look like um, palm fronds. Um, and so they make a really nice little backdrop for any pictures that you're going to do. And again, I'll show you this. So this is what you would use with a standard quilling comb. So this is the one that if you go to a quilling supply, this is what you would buy. I personally don't like these because the teeth are too far apart and it's sort of unwieldy. They look sort of bulky. So um, because they're also super um, thick in this direction, the circumference of each tooth is really big and it's harder to squeeze out um, and even out the holes if you choose to do that. So, and it makes you know something like this look less delicate. So I don't really like this particular one, but I wanted to show you for a beginner, it's a great little tool to start with. I went to a pet supply and bought a grooming comb and I use this particular one because I do have both. I always use this end because I've just found that I like it better. It's just prettier, but you can do what, to me, now you can do whatever you like. If you like the bigger teeth, that's fine. If you're just beginning, the bigger teeth are probably best so that you can kind of keep track of how many loops you've made. Um, but this is the one that I'll be using on all the demonstrations today. Another one that I'm going to demonstrate at the end of the video is going to be a flea comb. And it's such tiny little teeth, but it creates the most beautiful little um, shapes. So this particular is just a regular teardrop shape that I've created with the flea comb. And as you can see, it's just super delicate inside here. And I love detail and I like the more minute the detail, the better. So I just love this. It gives it a nice, sweet little look. And then it also, this particular one, um, I've always had a really hard time doing vortex coils with a, a traditional tool. I found that this comb, a flea comb, makes a great little vortex um, because it's also so very delicate and beautiful, but um, I really like those small, tiny little details. Again, if you don't like the tiny and you wanna work bigger, either because of eyesight or whatever your, your preference is, you can do these on other combs as well, but um, I just, I love the way the flea comb just gives you that uh, delicate look. It's the only way I can think of to say it. This particular one I'm going to use later, um, I'm probably a snowflake or something, because I just love this little shape. And you can do, once you've made it, you can put it into teardrops, you can make it into, well, any shape, any shape you'd like. But um, this particular one, I wanted a diamond, so there's that. Um, a couple of the tools that I'm also going to use when I'm producing some of these designs, I have a beading, uh, pair, a pair of pliers that I got at a beading supply. I'm tripping over my words today, sorry. <laughs> but um, I think it's just because I'm tired. But um, my fingers are not as strong as they used to be, so it's harder for me to get those holes kind of closed really nicely. So I like to use this for that. Uh, these nylon tips do really well because they won't mar your paper. You just have to be careful not to press down just in one area because you might end up with like a flat spot or something. But what I do is I will just go through and just gently move it along. Um, so you can see right here that there's one kind of still open, but if I put my pliers there, it's gonna cause an indention. So I don't use it there, but um, you know, that one little space, I can probably close it up if I really work to add it. But I'm gonna produce each one of these for you. I'll do them in time lapse, but um, I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, hit me below. Okay. So the first design is gonna be this simple little comb work right here that's gonna make the elements of this flower. If you've seen my uh, ombre video, you'll know that uh, this is basically the same thing. I'm just making a new one for a friend. So um, I always try to go on the bottom tooth just because it's easier to, to glue your end there than it is to go into the center and try to grab it. So you just want a little tiny bit of glue. And uh, if you've seen my gluing video, you know that I always keep a damp rag to 
wipe my hands and keep the teeth clean. So you just have a tiny bit of glue, fold that up until you've formed a loop and hold it for just a moment. Next, you want to make sure that you're somewhere close to the middle of the teeth um, so that you have plenty of room on both sides because this is a wrap that you're going to go both directions. Um, so I start in the middle and that's my first one. It's right, but it's just, you're gonna hit every tooth on the way around. I'm only gonna glue on one side for this particular element. So you go to the next tooth and then we're gonna go down in between the next one on the other side. And then I always try to line up, press my glue into place, and then I go into the next tooth. And so let me just finish this one real quick and then we'll move on. This is a, a quick little um, element and I've got different colors here so that it gives my flower a little more of a 3D look. If you've seen my video, again, on the ombre flowers, this is the exact same flower. A friend of mine uh, wanted that uh, flower so bad, and so I'm making this piece for her for her Christmas gift. Um, and I'm going to be doing um, what I call uh, like a brocade type look. It's a tone on tone look around the outside edges of that particular piece, which is also comb work. And I'll cover it just a little bit further in this video. So again, I wanna try to line it up so that you've got a nice flat straight piece. Too much glue and just enough glue to kind of get it wet. So that's gonna be way too much. So I'm gonna wipe that off with my hands, use my cloth, because otherwise when you press it down, it's going to ooze out the sides and then it's gonna get your teeth dirty and it's also gonna get your um, piece looking sloppy. It'll have this little flex on it that look like dandruff. And then you secure the end Hold it in place for just a second. Now, when you go to take this off of the comb, you have to be careful because if you don't make sure wherever you started, it's going to be sort of tightly holding on. So I always take my fingernail along the teeth and just gently push it off. And there you have it. And for this particular piece um, that it, where it's going to go, um, I'm going to create a, a arc on it and pinch the ends, but this particular piece can be um, used very what, easily with filling in color on you know a larger space. I made pumpkins with this, and I just I had a basic outline of a pumpkin, and I just filled it in with this type of comb work, and it's beautiful. So um, that's the first type. Okay, the next set for comb work is going to be very simple. Um, these three elements are all made with the same type of process. The only difference between this and this is how I'm applying my glue. If you um, have seen my uh, videos on gluing, you'll understand uh, part of this, but um, I do like to have a glue on both sides when I'm creating this type of element because these fit together to do that larger filigree piece that we're going to do a quill along on on my next video. Um, this one is the exact same process but I'm only gluing it once um, to form my first loop and then at the end to secure your end. Um, I don't glue any of um, the length of it when I'm doing the wrap. So, uh, same process as in the previous one, and you're just gonna start at the bottom and create your loop. Just a minimal amount of glue, spread super thin, because you don't want it to ooze out the sides. And then you hold that in place until it's semi-set. 
and then it's a very, very simple little process. We're gonna hit every single tooth until you run out of paper. So I'm gonna hit the first two teeth is your first wrap. And then your second and on and on. So this one, when it comes out, is going to look like this. But again, same process as the filigree. And I love making these little elements like when I'm watching TV or when I'm trying to unwind after work in the evening because it's sort of mindless, but it also is very satisfying when you're done. Um, these elements on the piece in which they're going to go on, I end up making hundreds of these and I make them in, I cut the paper in different sizes or lengths, excuse me, um, before I start. And then I have some that I leave unwrapped until I put it together so that I've got filler pieces, which I'll show in my next video when we do a quill along. So then when once you've got it all wrapped and uniform throughout, you want to um, glue the end. I like to glue the entire piece because otherwise it kind of pooches out a little bit. I don't know if pooch is a real word or not, but I don't, I like it to be um, as neat as possible. So I like to, to glue the entire end piece. So then I, and again, what I said in the last one is just to be careful, uh, wherever your pivot point is, the last one, the pivot point was in the center. This one, your pivot point is down here and you wanna make sure that you push that off. Otherwise, that center piece, your first loop, can sometimes stick to your teeth and it'll unravel the entire uh, element. So there you go, super easy. Um, the only thing that you might want to do, especially if you're doing something like this, is to secure the end um, with a, just a touch of glue. Otherwise, your end can move around inside there. So, and if you do move it around, you can get that vortex sort of look as well. Okay, that's that one. Okay, so the next element is going to be this little lacy piece. And again, you can do so much with these. Um, they're gonna, they're really pretty and um, it's super easy. So, and as you can see there, I've got it inside this particular leaf. I think it makes a really interesting little piece. So here we go. Again, make the loop just as we did before. I'm not gonna make you wait for that, but here we go. So you're gonna, again, choose something that's close to the center. Now there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I like to skip the first uh, tooth. And the reason that I do that is I like there to be a little bit of space in the center so that if I decide to put it something around it or in it, that it doesn't flatten out the little loops and, and make it look like it's been pinched. So, but it's all up to you. You can do it however you like. But, um, so you start somewhere in the middle that one was not going to be in the middle. And um, I skip the first tooth. I go down the first tooth and up through the second tooth. So it should be like that. Okay. Then you're going to go over the center and you want just a little drop of glue right there to hold it in place. And you're going to go down into the same tooth that you started on. Okay, so you're going to go down press your glue into place, and then come up in your next tooth. Again, a tiny bit of glue, just to hold everything in place. I like to glue all the way to the edges, and I'll show you why in a moment, because I'm gonna do a couple that aren't glued to the edge, and you'll see the difference. So again, you're gonna go down in the same tooth where you came up on the opposite side, one tooth in and around, okay? glue a tiny bit in here and you want to go end to end fold it over and go down the same tooth that you had come up through on your last pass and then back up again 
And so as you can see from this side, it's creating the loops, if that uh, makes sense to you at all. So this is what it would look like on its side. And it's just like this. So we'll continue to work this through the end of the strip. And again, this is the same thing. Be very careful with your glue, especially if you're working with a dark color because too much glue can ruin a piece very quickly. So you want to just put in a drop and spread it out super thin, which is also why I like to use brushes instead of applicators. Now, I, I you can use an applicator, and in fact, I'll show you one in the next couple loops. Um, but I prefer a brush because let's say I've got too much, I can turn the brush over and wipe it back away and I've saved myself a little bit of time and I don't have to get it on my fingers. Um, again, down where you came up before, one tooth in, and some glue, as you can see. I'm gonna go down in the same space where I came up last time, and back up again. So with an applicator bottle, um, these work fine. I just, I personally prefer the brushes because I don't have to stop and unclog it or clean it or anything like that during the process. And I just feel like I have more control with the brush, but everyone's different. And if you prefer this, this is fine. Um, if you do this, just a tiny bit of glue. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then I take the applicator on its side and I move the glue around. But do you still see, I don't, I doubt you can see it, but there's still a glob of glue right there. And if I pull my paper over, it's gonna ooze out the sides. So I'm gonna off it with my thumb, wipe it on my damp cloth, and then move on. And that's the reason that I don't particularly care for the applicator bottles, just because if your glue oozes out on either side, it can create, um, by the time you finish, the glue may dry on the teeth of your comb, then when you pull your piece off, then you've got the little dandruff things going on. And it can ruin a piece, especially when you've got dark paper. Um, so I'll just finish this up really quick. Now I'm going to, the next pass, I'm not going to glue all the way to the edges so that you can see what happens when I pull the piece off. In fact, I'll just put a little glue right there in the middle and it'll be super obvious. All right. I like to keep it lined up as I go as well because it keeps the paper taut and then you end up with a much neater piece. Again, if you've seen any of my videos in the past, I like to say that um, it's just like money. You take care of the pennies and the dollars to take care of themselves. If you are very careful and take care of each pass as you go, you'll end up with a much neater piece that will uh, look much more clean in the end so that all of your elements, when they go together, your entire piece will be nice and neat and clean. Um, but if you get a little sloppy with the glue here and there and it starts to come off onto the teeth, it's going to just, you'll have to redo those elements or you'll have to live with the fact that you've got little white speckles all over your piece. So, um, okay, one more pass and I think this will do it. The thing I also like to do at this point when I know I'm kind of at the end is I like to turn it over and count how many loops I have on each side because I like to make sure that my loops are A, uniform and straight but also that I don't have more on the right versus the left because I don't want it to look lopsided. So in this particular case, I have just enough for one more loop and to glue, and that's gonna even out those two pieces because I believe this one should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I know this one has seven because I've been doing this for a long time. So uh, if you are new or you have an, a substandard size of length of strip, you might want to just count them to make sure that they're uniform on both sides. Um, a balanced piece can um, make all the difference in the world and it goes back to, you know, if it's an unbalanced piece, you may not be happy with it and you have to redo it. So um, again, as with the uh,
combing that I showed earlier, I like to glue the entire end piece down just to keep it neat and clean. And then when there's some left over at the end, I'll trim it once I take it off. So again, you wanna start from the center to start pushing up. If you have something that's really tight, and I'll show you this on the flea comb, you wanna make sure that you hit all the sections when you're pushing it off so that it stays together correctly. So then I'm gonna just trim this little piece right here. And there you go. Now, get off my finger. When you get ready to turn this one way or the other, you're gonna see what happens here when you don't glue all the way down to the edge. You're gonna have a separation there. This is, I've exaggerated this, but um, there are times when you're gonna have just like a little bit of separation. And again, it's not gonna look uniform and nice and neat, but there you go. That's the next element. Super simple, a lot of different ways in which you can use it, which again is one of the reasons I like combing work because there are just so many options. Um, the simple shapes can just be used in so many different ways. And I'm sure that a lot of you out there are gonna be even more creative than I am as far as finding ways to use it. I'm quite a literal person, so um, I'm not as creative as sometimes I would like to be. I have to actually work at it. But um, I have a son that is a professional artist and I know that when it comes to some of these elements and you all probably will fall within this category that you're just naturally more creative and you're gonna find more ways to use these little elements. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is going to be this one. And um, you're gonna need five strips of paper for this particular element. I'll be right back. So the next one we're gonna do is um, this long skinny leaf. <clears throat> After um, looking at it for a little while today, I realized it's a little too long and skinny, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna modify it to show you what I do. Um, but I'm gonna do this one on time-lapse because there is so much, uh, it takes a lot of time to wrap the five strips. Um, but how it starts is the same way uh, that we would start um, this particular type of piece. You're gonna start in the middle and work both sides on the way out. But one thing to keep in mind is that um, we're gonna wrap multiple times around the same teeth. So, and again, there's really no hard and fast rule to this. I just sort of made it up, but it's, I start in the middle and I usually do five, five and five, and then I go to threes and twos, and I usually end on a two, but for some reason today I was feeling kind of weird, so I I ended on some ones, and that's why it's a little too long. But um, depending upon where you glue, you can also move the center back and forth a little bit um, to play with the shape. And um, so this next part's just gonna be time-lapse. So um, I'll come back in just a few minutes. Okay, that's just a few of the techniques that I wanted to show today. Um, I went ahead and uh, did a little more squeezing off camera because I was having trouble with my thumb. Um, but as you can see, I put them together. And if you keep adding down, you get this really beautiful um, palm frond. And if you are feeling adventurous, you can take maybe some pastels and either brush on a tiny bit of color or you can actually rub your pastel on it and then blend it in. I personally like to do it with my brush uh, because it, it spreads out a little bit better. But these are basic, very, very basic uh, combing techniques and I hope it helped you out. If, uh, if you liked it, please uh, leave me a comment below or if you have any sort of ideas about what you'd like to see, leave a comment, I read them all. Thank you very much.